Hey Floss Tube, it's Donna Ray coming to you from Flannel Jammies Farm. I'm delighted that you've come to visit with me today. I really enjoy our visits together and I want to wish you all a happy Sunday. Closer to the end of our video today, we'll be talking about the recipient of our gift away that we talked about last time. So hang on till closer to the end and we'll get to that. I want to thank some floss tubers who uh, gave me a charming mention in their videos over the last several days. Um, the first one is Debbie at Creatively Yours. Debbie is such a sweetie. I just love her videos and I just love her. Great energy. Abby at Top Knot Stitcher, who's a pen pal stitcher and just adorable. I just love who you are, Abby. Thanks for being you. Um, Corinna at Stitching Haven and Leslie Hurry, Hurley, pardon me, Leslie, at Fat Cat Flossing on Instagram. Um, she's Leslie Hurley here on YouTube and then Fat Cat Flossing on Instagram and that's fat and flossing with a PH. Um, also, a couple of people who couldn't quite remember my name when they were speaking about me and that's totally okay. And that's Textilist, Lori M, and uh, Jen at Felicity Stitches. So thank you all so much for just remembering me and thinking kind things my way. Um, now on to some charming mentions of my own. I wanted to talk to you about some new floss tubers that I've found this, this week. Um, they may not be new to you, but they are new to me. So the first one is Rachel at Stitchy Ray Stitch Away. Um, oh, what a gentle soul. Rachel is in the UK. She's in South Wales. She's the mom of a two-year-old boy. She likes to do really big, beautiful kits and stockings. And she has the most lovely little Little House Needleworks um, finish that she shows us. Do give her a visit. Um, she's just darling to watch. The next one is um, a new friend, Tiffany at Express Life Tifa. And she is, she's just precious. Um, she says at the beginning of her video that she's a little bit nervous, um, but she is so gifted. She played the viola for many years. She draws, she paints, she quilts, she embroiders, and now she cross stitches. She shared a lot of her works from in college when she'd done lots of embroidery. Just gorgeous stuff. She shared some of her quilted pieces and she also shared a couple of cross stitch pieces, including um, she's working on the rabbit that's on the cover of the April 2018 Just Cross Stitch magazine. And she finished uh, Heartstring Sam Flory's My Funny Valentine. Um, and she changed all the colors and it's just gorgeous. And she tells you she did it just for herself, which I love. Um, the next one is Wendy at Hoodlums Times Four. So Wendy's a long time YouTuber. She normally is videoing about her journals and her uh, planners. This time she's jumped in and has done her first floss tube video. She's come back to cross stitch for a while uh, she was out of cross stitch but she's come back now and she has in her words a gazillion starts <laughs> um, she shows us some really pretty whips in her videos so so go check out wendy at hoodlums times four um, the next one is Susie reno you may know sue as half of the design team of Raise the Roof Designs, along with Teresa Vanette, Kitten Stitcher. Um, fun facts, both Sue and Teresa have the middle name Ray, like me. <laughs> and that's actually how they got their business name in 2003, because they were both Rays, so Raise the Roof. Um, she's got a really fabulous intro and a really fabulous end piece to her video very entertaining and she shows us some really beautiful works in between um, and lastly i wanted to mention needle in a haystack um, needle in a haystack takes us on an incredibly interesting journey through the nashville needlework market she literally 
takes her camera, no voices, no interviews, just music in the background, and she shows you an image of the floor plan of all of the exhibitors on each floor, and then she walks that floor and shows you the window decorations and a little peek inside each shop. It is great and really gives you a feel for what market is like. Um, okay, other floss tube to doings. So have you heard Ginger Gerald, in addition to amazing cross stitch and becoming a knitter, Ginger Gerald has taken up bonsai. You heard me, bonsai. I'm really hoping, Gerald, that you take us along that journey and that you film um, the process of shaping the bonsai tree and um, all the intricacies that go into that. Fascinating. Um, Beth Twist of Heartstring Samplery made an appearance at Acorns and Threads yesterday. She brought along all kinds of her models and her charts and her incredibly gracious self to acorns and threads. I'm pretty jelly, I gotta tell you, because Joe, Pretty Southern, and Lisa Kindred Stitcher were there to spend the day with my friend Beth, so I'm a little jelly. But Pretty Southern did do a little video, so you have the opportunity to spend the day with Beth too. All right, Jen at Felicity Stitches recently did a video entitled All the Hall, y'all. And she shows us all of her haul. Um, the interesting thing about that is part of that haul is a huge quantity of really high quality stitching books. And so she takes us on a journey through those books and kind of shows us some of the designs and the pages and the photos. Stunning. You have to go take a look at Felicity Stitches, the all the haul y'all video. Um, last but not least, we had a really special event this last week. Michelle Bendy Stitchy had a birthday. So, Michelle, happy birthday. Joy to you, my Stitchy friend. All right, I had a finish. I know. <laughs> so, I was able to finish the uh, first in the Quaint Country Ladies Club from Dying to Stitch, and I've sh I showed you this in progress. This is, uh, Wendy at Pineberry Lane created this chart called Wool and Flax. And so, it's adorable. And here it is, Wool and Flax. And she gives you all of the uh, materials to finish it into a little bag in the kit. Dying to Stitch is wonderful about that. You get everything you need and full instructions, and it's just Fabulous. If you're not in a Dying to Stitch exclusive kit club, hop on it. Um, I could finish this. I have finished things before, but this is going to go off to Joy at Finally Finished. Like I said, I've finished things before, and you know, here's a piece that I did. This is a uh, This is the Christmas bells design from the Primitive Hair. My husband plays in the handbell choir at church. He plays the really big bells at the end of the table. Um, and so I did this for him as a Christmas gift. And I think it turned out really cute. Um, so I can finish, but I don't want to. So here's a piece that Joy did. Joy at Finally Finished. This is Ravens and Crows from Not Forgotten Farm. Um, I have a little thing for raisin, Ravens and Crows, but it's stunning. I mean, there's beautiful black velvet on the back and there's this scrunched and beaded trim all along the edge. That's why this is going to Joy, because she's amazing. Swoon! All right, whips. Pardon me, I dropped it. I'm back. <laughs> Last time I showed you a whip and many of you were so kind. You wrote me messages and you left me comments saying, you have got to, you've got to finish that Chessie and me piece, um, Home Save to Me. And here it is. And I am sorry to admit that I did not put one stitch in this. However, 
with your encouragement. This piece has come out of the basket of shame and it is um, now in my pile of whips to work on currently. So hopefully some stitches will go in that this week and um, that'll be a lot of fun to show you next time. All right, so I've made some progress on Friends of the Heart. And remember, this is the one that I'm doing as a stitch along with Ann Robbins and Pat Ryan and Donna Wynn. And um, I started in the upper, upper right corner. And so here it is, my thread hanging there. Here it is with the progress that I've made. So I've done almost all of page one and I've started down into the page below it, okay? And some of these things are blank because again, my friends and I are each stitching a motif on each other's work so that we can have that for all time. So making good progress on this, it's a joy to stitch. I can't recommend it highly enough. Get yourself friends of the heart. Gonna stop it? Okay, stop. Okay, so now on to shopping bags. An event of great magnitude has occurred recently in the stitching world. It has rocked our cross stitch community. You may have heard about it. It was Nashville Needlework Market. <laughs> um, I had pre-requested a few things from Nashville Market from my local needlework store, which is Dying to Stitch. And um, of course those ladies came back with things I had not anticipated and things that I had kind of seen but didn't really know that I wanted. and. And of course they had a three day market day event. Yeah. I will admit to you that I went to the store the day before the three day market event. I went to the store two of the market days and I bought lots of things. There is a reason that I carry my credit cards in a where the wild things are wallet. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, so while I was there, of course, I saw lots of friends, lots of stitchy friends. Um, uh, Donna Wynn, who is Yogi Net Girl on Instagram. I saw her sister Angel, who is a cherub on Instagram. I saw. Uh, Sarah, Sarah stitches it all on Instagram and it, just so many friends in the stitching community at Dying to Stitch over the week. Um, it was so much fun and yes, I did come home with lots of things. So Donna Ray, what were they? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so a uh, first, uh, I got the uh, newest uh, in the farmhouse Christmas series and I got the needle minder to match because all the things, right? Okay, next, uh, this one is one that of course I had to have. This is Blessed Be by Brenda Gervais. Gorgeous. Um, thankfully, Ann and Pat just knew I needed this, so um, in my bag it went. Next, I did get a couple of Lizzie Cates while I was there. Um, I'm not a Lizzie Cates stitcher. Don't anybody fall down, okay? Do I need to call 911? Everybody okay? I am not a Lizzie Kate Stitcher. However, I thought, well, I'll take a look. And I did find a couple that I really, really liked. I love this one. This is a little uh, Flora McSample snippet, and it's called Be Silly. And so it says, Be Silly, Be Honest, Be Kind. Um, it, this is adorable. I love this. I can't wait to stitch it. The other one I found, and this is from the um, Less is More series uh, from Lizzie Kate. I only found this one at the shop, which is Hate Less, Love More. Don't we all need to hear that? Now, I don't have the rest of them in this Flip It, 
but I'm on the lookout for them, so I'm sure I'll find them. This is one that I, I would love to stitch. I love the sentiments and the colors, and I just think it's darling. So I did get two Lizzie Cates. All right. Lottie Da. I love Lottie Da designs. They are just so beautiful and just different from everything else out there. So I got their fetishes, part one, which is the parrot, okay? And these are just little, little goodies to stitch. I love that. So fetish one is the parrot. And then there is um, fetish number two, Elizabeth Longley. Gorgeous, right? And then I got the la da I really went for um, Awake My Soul and Sing. This is beautiful. The colors are lovely. Um, this is a great verse and hymn scrumptious can't wait all right I did get myself some Plum Street um, of course Bovinia and Wilhelmina um, my husband is in love with the uh, the other dairy cow one we're, we're debating about that one I think it's cute too will I ever get it done I don't know but I had to get Babushka's bees right I'm a beekeeper my daughter did her grad work in Russian translation. Come on. <laughs> Babushka's bees. Isn't she everything? She's just chunky and round and busty and, oh, I love her. That's going to be me in a few years out there keeping those bees. All right. So next came, of course, Blackbird Designs. Barb and Alma. I love you ladies. Um, I can't thank you enough um, for your sentiments in here. Um, they mean the world to me and I just really appreciate it. Okay, so first is the Deck the Halls booklet. Stunning. This booklet is full of six, six strawberry patterns. The cool thing about Barb and Alma when they design a strawberry, they're gonna show you how else it can be used. They often will finish a design and take a photocopy and then create a box from it to hold your treasures. Ingenious ladies who share so generously with the stitching community. I am just so blessed to know them and love them and um, and enjoy all of their beautiful designs. So uh, again, Deck the Halls, Blackbird's de Blackbird Designs. Um, this one is so beautiful. And Blossom as the Rose, this booklet is called by Blackbird Designs. Um, so it again, in typical Blackbird fashion, is beautiful, absolutely beautiful the the softness of these designs is is just so charming um yeah this is a beautiful book and blossom as the rose the next one that i got shall i compare thee to a summer day okay i was actually at the um uh dying to stitch retreat when barb and alma came and so some of this I may have seen a little bit of before. Um, just, just beautiful. So they have taken a very large antique sampler and taken just a bit of it and created a sampler for us inside this, inside this book. Um, yeah. yeah, gorgeous designs. Everything is laid out for you. Again, they show you different ways and different things that you can do with the designs. Barb and Alma, you rock, ladies. I love you. All right, then we have some heartstring samplery because I love Beth and I love her designs. So the first, oops, I dropped some threads. 
I knew I did something. First one is um, because I needed it. <laughs> Queen Bee Pin Cushion. Pin cushion. Um, this one is adorable. Oh my gosh. And she had this at Acorns and Threads. And she shows it on the video that Joe Pretty Southern has put out. So take a look. She's got hers done. Um, this, of course, is the Prairie Life Sampler. The uh, Ode to Little House on the Prairie. This thing is so pretty. And she showed it at Acorns and Threads. The model is there um, with her the, uh, yesterday. And she showed it. It was stitched on 40 count. Um, so pretty. So pretty. Um, I also got and will be doing this one almost immediately because I love this Bible story about Hagar <clears throat> being exiled out into the wilderness and the Lord finding her and providing for her. And she says, Thou God seest me. Um, I love this so much. Beth, thank you means the world to me. I picked this up at Dying to Stitch, of course, over market days, but I also went ahead and kitted it up. So I'm going to be doing it on 32 count creme brulee. So this is the color. And these are the flosses. And so I think it's just going to be so, so pretty, right? Oh, scrumptious. Okay. So there's that, my heartstring samplery. Then um, I spend a lot of time in Baltimore. Um, it's about five hours away, and uh, I travel there several times a year to go to Johns Hopkins. Um, it's a long trip, and we normally end up staying a few days because um, there's lots for me to do there. So I hadn't planned on getting any more from Brenda Jure right now. I was going to wait. But I was flipping through and saw this and had to have it. So this one is Spring in Baltimore. There's also a summer one, but this one caught my eye. The colors are sweet as can be. It is, it's just lovely. Now here's the catch with this design. It's on 28 count and it's all over one. So it's one over one on 28 count. No, no. No, old, no, can't see, no. Um, so, of course, Anne helped me at Dying to Stitch, and what we decided to do is I'm going to do it on a 36 count American chestnut, and I went ahead and picked up my threads and the linen, and here we go. So, I think it's going to turn out beautifully, and I can't wait to get it done. Okay, so a few other just little treats that I got while I was at Dying to Stitch for their market days. Um, Wigs Dye Works has come out with some new colors. You've probably heard about that. Um, I was there. There goes the dog. <laughs> I was there, and the staff, um, knowing me, knew to put in my little bag one skein of Bee's Knees. And it's a lovely color, and because I'm a beekeeper, they absolutely knew that I would want it. And I do. It's a great bee color. Um, bees are not actually, uh, honeybees are not actually bright yellow and black. They are actually a goldish color and a dark brown. Um, wasps are that bright yellow. Yellow jackets are that bright yellow, but honeybees are more of a really beautiful gold. Uh, particularly the queen bee has a lot of the really beautiful golden colors in her. So a little fun bee fact. Um, the other thing about Dying to Stitch, so when you go into Dying to Stitch near their cutting table they have this three-tiered little thing and I lovingly describe it as my candy dish. Candy bowl. Candy yummies. In that little thing, they have rolled up the ends of their their cut fabric. Because when you go in and you say, I want to do spring in Baltimore, they literally figure out the exact cut that you need. And if it ends up being 13 by 17, that's what they cut for you. So at the end of their bolts, they will have little extras. 
and they roll them up and they tie a little ribbon on them and they put a little note on it and tell you exactly what it is and they put it in this candy bowl, candy dish, delightful little treat thing. And I go in there and I say, ooh, winter brew is one of my favorite neutrals. I'm getting that. And then I say, oh, I love fog lifter. It's the perfect kind of grade color. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, and it's 11 by 16 and a half. I can use that. And oh, what's this one? Oh, it's Old Town Blend and a 36 count. I think I'll take that home too. So I get all these little, you know, things in my bag, these little rolled up goodies. And I bring them home and I put them in my linen stash. Let me show you. Ready? <laughs> in here I have my linen stash. And so each of these little cubbies in this antique secretary are labeled with a little tiny sign that tells me what count goes where. So this one's a 36 count. That actually goes right there and I just tuck it in. This one is a 36 count. It gets tucked right in there as well. And this way, when I see a project and I need, I need a fabric, I can just kind of go, you know what? I think that would be gorgeous on winter brew. And so I tuck in here, there we go. I tuck in here and I find the fabrics that I have and what I can use for a project that I want to stitch right now. It's also really great when I have tiny pieces like that. I can do ornaments or pin cushions, just little scissor fobs, all sorts of things. Love keeping them in here. I've got some other little remembrances in here, so it's a really fun little place for me to peek into during the day. Bye, everybody. Be good in there. Multiply. <laughs> All right. <sighs> now, to our 1,000 subscriber gift away. Um, I had asked many of you to comment, well, I'd asked all of you to comment, um, if you'd like to be considered on your favorite thing about spring. So many of you commented that you love the return of the birds and hearing the bird song. Many of you commented that you really like to see the green shoots coming out of the ground and all of the beautiful spring flowers. Many of you commented that um, you love getting your hands dirty. Like me, you want to get your hands in the soil and work in your garden. I love that too. Oh my goodness. And some of you commented about the, the new life and the fresh hope and the resurrection that we celebrate at this time of the year. So, do you remember the gifts? There were lots of them. So, in our basket, we had, um, Paulette had been so generous. So, we had um, Hello Spring. I'm sorry if there's glare, it's in the bag. Um, we had signed by Paulette. We had Bovinia, right? And Wilhelmina. And we had these lovely little Hello Spring picnic napkins so that you'd be ready to go on your first picnic the minute the weather breaks, if it ever does. <laughs> you had this lovely little bunny bag that's gonna be stuffed with little goodies from Flannel Jammies Farm. And while I was at Dying to Stitch, Anne was so kind because she said, I wanna give you a little goodie to put in your little bunny bag for your viewer that's going to receive this gift. And I said, oh, I would love that. So she gave me these darling scissors. They're in spring colors and they've got little birds all over them. So these will be tucked in that bunny bag for the recipient as well. So, tuck these back in the basket. There we go. Um, so I could have, you know, I could have used random number generator or random comment generator or one of those things to choose, to choose the gift recipient. Um, but instead I called Paulette and I said, Paulette, pick a number 
between one and the total number of comments. <laughs> she was very, very um, excited that I asked her to choose the number. So Paulette chose number 139. So the winner of our 1,000 subscriber gift away is Holly Hintzman. Holly, I am thrilled for you and I'll be getting in touch with you over the next couple of days to get your address so that we can get this out in the post to you very quickly. Congratulations. All right, now for a very small homesteady moment, okay? Um, I had posted on Instagram this week a slideshow of photos of me in my overalls in my garden. And I showed you lots of things that were springing back to life. A lot of herbs, lots of different things that were just greening up and becoming gorgeous for spring. So what do I do with all those herbs? I mean, obviously, if I'm cooking some butternut squash, I'm going to run outside and I'm going to grab, snip some rosemary off of the bush and bring it in and cook. What do I do when it's covered in snow? Or the hurricane has come and I don't want to go outside and pick herbs for supper. <laughs> I have my own store of dried herbs. So what we do, we grow everything beyond organically. They are not touched by chemicals. They are not um, we don't use chemical fertilizers. We, uh, we use compost that we make ourselves. Um, and so I know exactly what has been in the soil and on these plants from the moment those organic seeds were planted. So I'll go out and snip lots of herbs and I'll put them in my dehydrator. So today, to show you, I went outside and uh, snipped some flat leaf parsley. Love flat leaf parsley, right? So, um, I'm just going to get this a little closer. So here's my dehydrator, and I snip the parsley and just put it in the tray. This um, is a Nesco brand dehydrator. Lots of my really cool homesteady friends have the very fancy Excalibur, because they are, they're special, they're, they're great. I have a Nesco brand, it's the square one. I found it at the Navy Exchange, <laughs> and it was not very expensive at all. And it came with four trays and these nifty little um, silicone trays that if you're doing small, if you're drying small things, um, they don't fall through because the holes are pretty big in the tray itself. It also comes with trays that help you to do fruit roll-ups. You can pour in pureed fruit, and then you've got a fruit only, no high fructose corn syrup, fruit roll up for your family and they're delicious. So we dry vegetables to throw into soups and stews. We dry fruits to munch on and put into granola. Um, we do all sorts of, of wonderful drying, but we do like to dry the herbs. So come in with my parsley today. I wash it off. I snip it and I put it on the tray prettily, right? Because Lynette, right? It's all about the pretty in my house, right? <laughs> um, so put it on the tray and I stack them up and I can fill all four trays with herbs. And then, one second, and then I put the lid on. And this happens to be a dehydrator that has the fan in the top, in the lid. And what that does, you it's even got a handy dandy guide on the top that tells you what temperature to dry things at. Then you just set the temperature. I'm gonna set it for herbs, which is 125, 115 to 125. Oh, I lied, it's 95. I'm reading upside down, oh my goodness. So I'm gonna set it to 95 and then I'll plug it in. And then I don't do anything. And so overnight into the next day, the dehydrator runs and it dries out the herbs. Now, you can hang herbs to dry, um, but the dehydrator dries herbs in a very even, um, very consistent, 
pretty quick way and there are no cobwebs involved. <laughs> when I used to hang herbs, I would end up with cobwebs and dust and things on my on my herbs and I, I just didn't like that very much. So dehydrator. So once they're all done, crispy, crispy, like, like they would be, I pull them out of the dehydrator. Pardon me. And they go in these little jars. Okay? So I've got lemon thyme. That's the other cool thing is you can get varieties of herbs that you might not get in the stores. Because we grow lemon thyme, we can pick it, dehydrate it, and then I've got it on hand for a meal. Here's lemon balm, which is beautiful to make tea. Oh my goodness, it's so soothing and it smells fantastic. And here is my flat leaf parsley, all dried. We use this all the time. And, um, oops, so you'll see, it's just, it's very crunchy. And I'll just kind of sprinkle it onto whatever I need, um, whether it's a, a dish that I'm cooking, a soup, a stew, and it's ready to go. I have a whole uh, pantry full of these little jars. These are <laughs> a friend of mine's grandmother loved this particular type of jelly, and so she gave me all of these jars, and they're perfect for these herbs. I can see what's in them. I can put a label on the top. We're ready to go. So that's our little home study moment. I, you know, I invite you to uh, check out dehydrating. You can make beef jerky in your dehydrator. Um, like I said, fruit roll-ups. Um, nothing better than some dried apples for a snack or in your oatmeal. So give it a shot. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer them. Again, do stay tuned after the video, after I've said goodbye. Um, we'll have some still shots of things that uh, will give you a closer up look of of what I've shown you today. And I will have links below in the description box of some things that I've shown and talked about. So, Stitchy friends, until next time, I invite you to be the grace and the kindness that you want to see in our world. Bye-bye. If I just say the words, is that enough to make them if I just say the words, we well, you know that I love you. I try to open up my heart so that you can see the truth. If I just say the words, we well, you know that I love you. Yes, I do. I love you.